House Republicans have had a busy start to their majority, from investigations into the Biden administration to early negotiations around the debt ceiling. Now they've turned their focus to the administration's handling of the Chinese spy balloon. Here to talk about all that's swirling is one Republican congresswoman not shy about breaking with her party. That is Nancy Mace of South Carolina. She joins me now. Congressman Mace, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's begin with the news of those the series of four flying objects that the U.S. has been shooting down in recent days, first of which was this Chinese surveillance balloon shot down off the South Carolina coast earlier this month. Senators were briefed today. Do you have any idea when you'll be getting a briefing? Well, Congress did have a briefing midday this afternoon, but it was a it was a briefing with open source information. I'm looking forward to a classified briefing, another classified briefing. I had actually two last week, but that was before these three new objects over Alaska, Canada, and Michigan were shot down. I have more questions than I have answers at this point. What's the biggest question you want answered right now? Well, I mean, really looking at this situation, either they've been up there the whole time and we're only now shooting them down, or we were unaware that they were up there. And so neither scenario, in my opinion, is a good one. Uh, what kind of technology are we using? Because we have radar, we have satellite, we have other classified means to track objects in our sky. For example, you know, if you're above 18,000 feet, you'll have an FAA fly plan. The other questions I have are concerning the origin of these devices or objects, or I'm assuming, I, I don't know anything yet, quite yet, that these are surveillance drones, uh, likely not from China, but from another country. Um, and we're not going to shoot anything down if we don't know what it is. And so playing cat and mouse with Congress and keeping us in the dark over what this is, is not healthy for either side of the aisle. And if we continue to shoot these things down out of the sky, you know, I, I worry that there's going to be fear on the ground with the American people, which is why I'm asking for more transparency. Uh, I want to ask you about the other big news today out of South Carolina. That's former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who just announced her presidential run. She is from your district. You have said you would like to see a woman run. So will you endorse her? Well, I would love to see a woman on the ticket, as I said previously. I may have two constituents running um, in this election cycle in 24. So for number one, it's very exciting to see the leadership coming out of South Carolina. I do want to say something very special about Nikki. I wish that people could see how hard she works and how much she cares. Nikki was one of the only few elected officials that would return my phone call when I was primaried by the former president two years ago. Um, it was a very lonely experience. We won resoundingly, and she was with us every step of the way. She's become a good friend. I'm excited about her jumping into the race. I have not yet uh, decided on an endorsement yet, but I'm very excited. I really do truly believe that Republicans need a woman on the ticket, and she's more than qualified for the job. She also made the case that it's time for a new generation of leaders. That's similar phrasing to something we heard from Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders um, in her response to the president's uh, State of the Union address, this idea of a new generation of leaders for Republicans. Do, do you agree with that? What does that mean? What would a new generation do that the old one didn't? Well, we need to look forward. Many, many of our leaders want to look to the past. They want to look to 2020 and the last couple of years, we need to look forward. And I represent a swing district. I have a very purple seat. Even though I'm in South Carolina, uh, my district is very much a swing district. And we have a number of people in this country that have left the Democrat Party. They've left the Republican Party. They don't feel like they have a home. And we need leadership that will embrace those independent voices and that will look forward. And another example that I can cite is after Roe v. Wade. Uh, Republicans didn't do a very good job of being and showing compassion towards women, even if we disagree on a, on a very hot button kind of issue. I've worked really hard to build trust with women uh, and constituents and voters alike to find some middle ground on that issue because that issue is not going away. And uh, so I'm looking for that kind of leadership out of a nominee in 24. Does a new generation of leaders mean moving away from Donald Trump? Well, I think it means it means certainly means looking forward. And I want to see a, a nice field. I want to see a vigorous primary. By the time these candidates get to South Carolina, I, I don't want to see too, too many. We don't want more than 10 or 12 in the race. But South Carolina is a very seminal moment and will play an important role in the Democrat primary, primary and the Republican primary. Typically, uh, whoever wins South Carolina goes on to win the nomination on the Republican side of the ticket. And so I expect it'll be vigorous. I'm excited about folks coming to South Carolina. And I do believe that we need to, as a country, uh, both parties, especially Republicans, we've got to look forward 
And we have to embrace more independent voices within our party. And that's the kind of person I'll be looking to support when the time comes. Congresswoman, as you well know, Congress needs to raise the debt ceiling uh, in order for the U.S. to avoid defaulting on its debt. Do you think that your party should be holding up that vote to try and get spending cuts, as some of your colleagues have said they want to do? We have a real problem with spending in this country. Um, I would like to see some sort of budget reform as part of the debt ceiling. I think now is a good, as good a time as ever. Uh, this, the debt ceiling was originally started um, right after World War II to help with the war and paying for the war. And um, it's really important that we understand that that has been abused over the years by Republicans and Democrats. It's both sides. We're at $31 trillion in debt, $5 trillion under this current administration, $8 trillion under the previous administration, and the list goes on and on. And we need to have serious reforms about the budget now uh, rather than kicking the can down the road, and I hope it's part of this vote. The Congresswoman, you, as you know, Republicans have voted multiple times to raise the debt ceiling without tying it to spending cuts. Do you feel it undermines the Republican messaging on spending cuts when that argument only comes up under Democratic administrations? Well, you definitely can't call yourself a fiscal conservative if you don't operate that way. It is a problem within our party uh, that we have this message of that we're a limited government and we're fiscal conservatives, and yet we have added to the debt by trillions of dollars, administration after administration. It is a problem. I'm a fiscal conservative. I've made no bones about it. I've not ever voted to raise taxes on my constituents, for example. I feel that's really important. And I think that's a bipartisan issue, whether you're Republican or Democrat. Nobody wants to see taxes raised in the middle of a potential recession or inflation as high as it is. They want to see the government act responsibly and, uh, and, and do what every other household has to do or every other business has to do, is be responsible with the money that they have. And that's simply what I'm asking for as part of this conversation. Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina, thank you for your time. Thank you.